There's only been one blade. There's only ever gonna be one blade. Hello there, gang, and welcome to Displaying Model Behavior. It's time for the only news that matters, and that's good news. Select have revealed their Deadpool and Wolverine, Wolverine, and honestly, state of your posing, mate. Do we have to put up with this? I mean, you know, I know it's a small part, but I think we can do better than this. I'm not even going to talk about the figure, just whose job was that? Because guess what? I bet you had one job. <laughs> really? C come on! I mean, it sounds like a funny thing to, to, to rant about, but seriously? If I was the person who sculpted or painted or was in any way in charge of producing this Wolverine and then someone posed him like that for the promo shots, I'd be like, am I a joke to you? <laughs> so the pose is notwithstanding. This Wolverine looks okay. He's going to be 30 bucks up for pre-order now, I think. I'll double check that. But it's another Wolverine from Deadpool and Wolverine. Bayek, we're getting a lot of them. But this one does have the bare arms, which is a big thing that people want. The Marvel Legend and I think the Figure Arts one as well. They're just the covered up ones, which we were all very disappointed about when we first saw those reveal pictures, those behind the scenes ones. We thought, nah. They gotta fix this. What I wanted to know is, headcanon, how did the sleeves disappear? He had the fight with Deadpool and then they were gone. So, I don't know. Maybe he chopped his arms off and then they grew back without the sleeves. But then he wouldn't have adamantium bones. I'm overthinking this, aren't I? And since we're talking about Marvel Legends, it only makes sense to tell you about this channel sponsor, Legends First. Legends First is the one-stop shop to chronologically catalogue all of your Marvel figures, but not just Marvel figures. We're talking G.I. Joe, McFarlane, Mafex, Four Horsemen, NECA, and a whole bunch of other lines in between. Not only can you mark off what you've got, but you can make want lists of what you're after. You can catalogue what you have pre-ordered and where you've pre-ordered it from and when it's due. Plus, every single figure has a price listing as well, so you can see what you've spent. Ugh, don't want to think about that. <laughs> but also what your collection is worth. And they have this clever algorithm thing that tracks eBay prices and sales. So you can actually take some good reassurance that the facts that you're being given are pretty accurate. I mean, I say that because a figure is only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. That's uh, something that a lot of people, myself included, sometimes make that mistake. I'm like, oh, this, this figure is worth so much. And it's like, well, it's only worth that if you find someone who wants to pay it. <laughs> you know? But Legends Verse is so great. They've been sponsoring this channel for a long time now, and it's a real pleasure to work with them. Even if you don't join up for Legends Verse, you can still just go in there and, like I do, just while away. Hours and hours going through all the old archives and just looking at all the old action figures, seeing what was out there, where we've come from, and probably surprising yourself with what's out there that you can go back and find if you're feeling like you want to complete some little gaps in your collection, maybe with characters you didn't even know existed. So guys, go give them a follow. Uh, if, can you follow a website? Yeah, you know what I mean. Go check them out and tell them Dave sent you. McFarlane have shown full reveal images of their Justice League Task Force figures. This is a dark side builder figure wave. And I didn't realize when they were revealed at Comic-Con, these are 16-bit, uh, not cell shaded, but like pixelated versions of the characters. And that's different. I mean, other companies have done similar video game style figures before, but is this the first time McFarlane have done it? I think it might be. And uh, yeah, the results are... But, well, they're, well, they're results, you know? You might like them, you might not. Me personally, no, I don't I don't like them. But I'm not saying that they're bad pixelated versions of characters. I just, yeah, I don't really want pixelated versions of characters. This is so wonderfully 90s. I, I kind of just wanted the, the the standard ones. But then why am I even complaining? I'm, I'm, I wasn't going to buy them. So <laughs> what, a, what a wonderfully classic multi social media type person. I'm not going to buy this thing, but I'm going to complain about it anyway. <laughs> if that's not moral behavior, I don't know what is. But the fact that it's taken from the video game of the 90s as well, just... Oh, the 90s nostalgia is strong with this one. So in that regard, I do have a lot of time for it. Even though I'm not going to buy it. Todd's Mods. We're going outside the box a little bit with uh, McFarlane toys. These are just statues, but I, I, I dig this. I wouldn't have thought that this is something that I would be interested in seeing, but actually... 
I I really like it. There's something about the the gnarly, chonky, ugly look of these caricature type figures or statues that I don't know. I find it really appealing. They're they're not huge, like four and a half inches tall, but the, the Batman, the Bane, the Swamp thing. I I just like this aesthetic. I I think it's cool. It's weird. It's unusual, and it's presenting these characters in a a way, in a form, and a style, and a fashion that you don't normally see. And I'm actually here for it. I I really like that. And if if, if Todd wanted to do Todd mods of Marvel characters, which is not outside the realms of possibility now, I'd love to see that. Imagine like a, a stocky, chunky, hunched over Wolverine. I think that would be a really cool desk toy. I'm, I'm going to try and manifest that. Let's see what happens. Mafex have a whole bunch of figures up for pre-order. So first of all, the big one that I'm excited for is Jubilee. Classic 92 Jim Lee Jubilee. I, ooh, I might be tempted with this one. She's got the nice cloth goods jacket. The old Marvel legend is great, but this is just that little bit, little bit higher in quality there. The only thing I'm a bit disappointed about is her power effects. Like, what's... What's going on there? Jubilee should have all these popping colors. That's the word, colors. We need, we need more colors. It should be fireworks. This is just generic red streaks. That doesn't that doesn't do anything for me. So that's a bit of a shame. But the rest of the figure with the head sculpts, the bubble gum and the glasses, that looks really cool. So I do like that. Just would have liked some more interesting power effects. Then also, we're getting Zachary Levi from Shazam, was it Fury of the Gods? That's a, another DCEU movie that I feel is kind of like been forgotten now. Unless there are some hardcore Shazam fans out there, if there are, more power to you. You can pick this one up very soon as well. And then also we're getting Michael Jordan. So for all you basketball fans there, then boom, Michael Jordan. I... <laughs> I'm going to move on from this one very quickly because Dave and sports, yeah, the longer I talk, the faster my ignorance is going to show. I'm going to be a little bit different. I'm going to start things off with Creator Corner because I want to show you guys this incredible Transformers diorama piece that was made by a guy called Chris Kutsky. Kutsky. Chris Cooksey on Instagram. Smooth, Dave. This was unveiled at New York Comic Con. Got a whole bunch of pictures from Transformers World. Is that the name of the website? Transformers Network? I'm going to have to fact check myself on these. But I love what they've done because all the figures here, or most of them, are action figures. Just regular Transformers toys that he's then painted and just judged up a little bit and put in this incredible Transformers the movie 1986 pose. And I love that when you're looking at it, your eyes can pick out all these little different bits and pieces here. That's really, really cool. You got a uh, hot rod in the center opening the matrix. And I can almost hear Optimus's voice saying, arise Rodimus Prime. You know, there was actually a cut there by mistake. The rest of the sentence said, and go and give the Matrix to Ultra Magnus like you should do because Rodimus Prime is a stupid name for the new leader. I mean, seriously, Rodimus. Who came up with that? Uh, at least that's my headcanon for Transformers. But yeah, uh, go give this dude a follow on Instagram because he doesn't really do many pop culture kind of stuff that we're into, but the work he does is pretty incredible. And this Transformers piece, ah, oh, Bayek, chef's kiss, beautiful. Big Bad Toy Store have some 25th anniversary MDLX Transformers figures available for pre-order. So we're getting two repaints of the Decepticon jets. Now we're getting a couple of the more obscure ones. We're getting Acid Storm and Sunstorm. I think, and stop me if I'm wrong, but I think these guys debuted in the IDW comics. I could be way off base with that, but at least that's where I was first exposed to them. And I do love the bright, popping colors of them. They're expensive as MDLX Transformers are. They're $119 each. And honestly, that's kind of making me think, you know what, Dave? We definitely don't need to be a completionist with this line, but ah, oh, dang it. I'd love to be because Starscream flanked by Skywarp and Thundercracker looks cool enough, but then throw in these two bright, colorful dudes as well. Man, that's a, that's a heck of a display you got there.
This news feels a little bit old now, but I just wanted to show you the pretty pictures. Mondo shown off fully and up for pre-order. They have their animated Venom 1-6 scale. This, I can just hear Eddie Brock from the animated series. I can hear the music in my head. Just look at these pictures and it's just like... We your old clothes, kid. You hand-me-downs. The symbiote that Peter Parker rejected. Eddie Brock embraced. And now we're bonded. <laughs> I do a pretty mean Eddie Brock. And so have Mondo. If you've got a few hundred bucks to spare, well, a couple of hundred bucks. Either way, it's, it's an expensive price tag. But if you can afford it, then you can get yourself a good-looking Venom. You know me, I love the finer things in life, and occasionally action figures cross over that line into full-on artistry. And that, my friends, is where we get the Y-Cat and Gearhead Toys Clumsy Bot series, Minsky. This reminds me very much of Damn Toys and Coal Dog. I just love these little things that they look like stop-motion animation puppets, and that is just so cool. So much character going on with these things with real soft goods and just beautiful art artistry and attention to detail. I think that at the moment we only have reveal pictures. So I can't tell you the whens and the wheres and the how muches, but just look at the images, man. That's that that's artwork right there. This this is a piece of beautiful action figure ness and you must pay homage to it. Less beautiful, but a whole lot more badass, Revoltek have shown full reveal images of their Titan Armored... What's his name? Attack on Titan, Armored Titan. There you go. Goes up for pre-order on the 29th of this month, and he looks big, bad, terrifying, and pretty darn imposing. I'm impressed with the size, the scale, the heft of this guy. Very, very cool. He'll look wicked next to the, the female Titan as well. These two guys, I mean, there's not much you can have that's going to be in scale with them because, I mean, like, they're kind of 1 12th scale and as much that they're the same height as 1 12th scale characters. But, of course, the whole point is that they are gigantic Titans. It's like Godzilla figures. You know, they will stand alone as their own just cool, awesome display pieces. And with that being the case, this does look quite awesome. Hot Toys, it feels like maybe they're a little bit bereft of ideas without so many Marvel movies coming out. Normally, they will just be cranking out Hot Toys for Marvel movies. With the slate being a little bit empty, now they're going to have to go back to the well and draw out some fresh water. It's a strange analogy for action figures. But they're doing another version of their Spider-Man 2 Spider-Man. This time, a red and black version. 2.0, they're calling it. And, I mean, hey, it's very similar to the original one, just... Slightly different color saturations going on there. But if you don't have the original, or if you're like Daddy Warbucks and just want every different permutation of Spider-Man, well, this one's going to be available soon as well. Tunshi Studios are doing a mech to go with their Metal Slug figures. Don't have a price yet, but I'm sure it's going to be expensive. Reminds me a lot of the Mezco mech, the, the Void Wars mech that they did about a year ago or so. But a bit more cartoony, a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit more affordable as well. Because I think the Mezco one was like, what, 300 bucks or so? It was expensive. I really love the Metal Slug character figures that they've done. They look so fun because they've just done these wonderful three-dimensional versions of what were really basic little pixel characters. It's a great kind of transition, the way that they've created them. That's my, that's my phone telling me I need to go to work. Oh, geez, I really do. Okay, let's wrap this up. This looks cool. Couple more items to go. Let's go. Tamashi Nations have shown off King from Tech N8. I love this Jaguar head wrestler guy. So he's going to be available for pre-order on November 1st. I hate checking my notes when I'm talking because I don't like the angle of my face when I look down. It's funny the little things that kind of irk us about ourselves. And he's going to be revealed around about... No, he's going to be released around about April of next year. So, yeah, another one for the Tech N collection. And this might be my favorite one yet. He, he looks really, really fun. Also from Tamashi Nations, we got Venom from Venom 3, Save the Last Dance. Is it Save the Last Dance? Whatever, the, the Last Dance. Save the Last Dance is a different movie. One that I would rather watch than Venom 3. So there you go. He's really not much different looking from other Venoms that have come out because the style of the character never really changed throughout all three movies. The quality changed, though. 
seem to get worse each time by the looks of things. But if you don't have a Venom, then I, this is a good looking Venom. I, I do like it. I think the design's cool. It's a shame that he never got the spidery looking symbol. I mean, they introduced Null in the third movie. That'd be a good excuse to put that on there. Maybe they do. Maybe it's a big reveal in the third act of the movie. I won't know. I'm not going to waste my time. However, a nice action figure did come out of it. Going to be up for pre-order on November 1st. And just like the Tekken figure, the, te the ke 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 figure, pfft, it's going to be releasing around about April. McFarlane are doing a whole bunch of Red One uh, Movie Maniacs type statues. Uh, I, was, I was trying, my brain was like, don't say figures, Dave. They're not figures. Well, they kind of are, but they're not action figures. The movie maniacs are just pre-posed statues. I'm just amazed to see so many of them. I wonder if they had some interesting licensing deal where they must have maybe got like a financial compensation or incentive to make so many figures because this seems like a bit of a risky prospect. It's a, is it a Netflix movie or is it a cinema movie? Maybe it's a cinema movie. I don't know. I don't know. But it seems like an unproven property that they're really investing a lot of time and effort into. I mean, hey, maybe the movie will be good, but I just feel like The Rock is... The, the, the bloom is off the rose with The Rock in Hollywood, you know. People are kind of seeing through the, the slick Dwayne Johnson kind of an ear and we're like, nah, we're not sure. I think the love affair might be over. But you know what? If I come across this movie, then I, I, I might watch it. I might enjoy it. For me, it looks like an airplane movie. So maybe in about a year's time when I'm up in the sky traveling somewhere, I'll be like, oh, Red One, let's give this a go. And speaking of McFarlane statues, they've also shown a preview image of their upcoming Catwoman. One sixth scale, and I actually really like the look of this. I think this, this is a cool looking Catwoman. Badass looking design, looks very fragile. <laughs> so I wouldn't trust myself with it. But if you're a Catwoman fan, this, this looks really, really cool. Hasbro have full gallery images of their, I gotta read this, Sabine Wren. Uh, yeah, that's it, with her... Her thing that you yoroid like a benta. 60 bucks. Whew, ha, ha, whew, that's expensive. But I mean, it looks okay. The, the sculpting, the articulation, the paintwork on the, the creature, it actually looks nice. Like a, 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 good, a good mount for her to ride there. It's just, yeah, you know what? No, no. I'm not going to gripe about prices. Because also, actually looking at it, that's $60 Canadian. So that actually ain't too bad. I know that, yeah, I, <laughs> I was about to be all harumph. This is too expensive. Uh, you know what? It is what it is. It's fine. I, I actually think, yeah, it looks nice. This is a, a nice looking action figure. NECA are doing a Gremlins 40th anniversary. Wow, that must mean I'm old as well. Whew. They're doing a 40th anniversary Gremlins 3 pack. And I dig it. I like the look of this. It's a Gremlins evolution going from, you know, the nice little uh, Mogwai gizmo up to Spike and then Gremlin Spike, which even now to this day does give me the goo goo jeebies. But yeah, this pack together, it looks pretty cool. You can order it from your favorite NECA retailer. In movie news, Alien Romulus is getting a sequel, which is great to hear. You know what? I didn't think it was an amazing Alien movie, but I thought it was a decent, if rather safe, Alien movie. But after some of the misses we've had recently, it kind of made sense to kind of go with what brung you to the dance, or dance with who brought you. That's, that's what it is. Basically make a safe Alien film that wasn't trying to reinvent the wheel, but just give people a good, fun, Alien-filled time. That's what they did, and they're being rewarded with a legacy sequel. And that's nice to hear. A movie that's not getting off the ground is Blade. Ah, that, okay, I'm not going to belabor the point. It's just not happening. Re Wesley Snipes was right when he said, there's only ever going to be one Blade. Yeah, uh, he wasn't wrong. It's funny that in the movie that was played off as a joke because we all know, wink, wink, yes, there is going to be another Blade. But actually, um, no, time makes fools of us all. And Blade has been officially taken off of the Marvel slate. You know we're going to get it one day, but it's not anytime soon. And what has it been replaced by? Predator Badlands. This ain't a bad thing necessarily because Prey was, it was really good. Speaking of Alien Romulus being a safe sequel, Prey was kind of safe in that it just, it didn't try to do anything crazy. It just told an awesome Predator story. Maybe not that safe considering they were going back in time, but Man, it was a good time. So Predator Badlands, I'm all up for this. Bring it on next year. And speaking of next year, Spider-Man 4 is going to start filming in summer of next year for a 2026 Christmas release date. Nope, not Christmas, Dave. I'm fact-checking myself in real time here. July 24th. 
2026, that's when we're going to see Spider-Man 4 in theatres. Too many T's and F's in that sentence. Like a man who can't pronounce his T's or his F's? You can't say fairer than that then. But there you go, it's happening. It's not a surprise. We all know that we were going to get a Spider-Man 4 because Sony need to do that to keep the rights because they insist on keeping the rights to Spider-Man no matter how many terrible Spider-Man universe movies they make. We're never going to get it properly in the MCU. But, but close enough. It's MCU enough that the Spider-Man movies are okay. It's just all of his other supporting cast that... <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they struggle. Bring on Craven next year. That's going to be interesting to see. But I'm glad that Tom Holland's going to be back, probably with Zdenia and uh, who else is there? The, the dude who plays Ned. I like him too. They're probably all going to come back and fingers crossed, it's going to be a good time. Today's cosplay cover artist is Brie Lena. I guess since I was covering a couple of Wolverine Deadpool stories, might as well include one of the best, I think. Wolverine Deadpool cosplays recently. This lady, she she sure knows how to make yellow spandex look good. Not only that though, she is pretty prolific with an amazing set or repertoire, I guess. Uh, what do you call it when you look through pictures of like a portfolio? There you go. You can tell when I film these episodes in the morning because my brain is just jelly. I need to go make another pot of coffee. And folks, that does it for good news for today. What did you think about the stories covered? Comment below. Let me know. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, then you know what you got to do. You got to join the 6-1 Clicks by clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons. Or if you want to go one step beyond in supporting the channel, then you can do by getting yourself a YouTube channel membership. That gives you the access to all the exclusive videos and you can comment in the different live streams and just, you know, sleep well at night knowing that you're helping out Dave because Lord knows... I need help. Not just with YouTube, just 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 in general. <laughs> so gang, thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, I still have a Patreon as well. Well, while, while I'm while well, I'm just coming to you, cap in hand. Um, and I do my As Told by Toys shows. I've almost finished Age of Apocalypse. So if you want to suggest a storyline for me to cover in As Told by Toys, then that's a little Patreon bonus. You can suggest an As Told by Toy story and I'll get to work on it. All right, that's enough for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really have to get to work. So until next time, keep displaying model behavior.